guns, sporting goods, and survival gear. Protect your rights and your freedom. Ask about their CPL classes. Renegade River, next to the police station at downtown Spring Lake. News Talk 1090 is the talk of Muskegon. Uh, welcome to the Mike Hewitt Show. My name is Mike Hewitt, and today we're going to shift gears a little bit. We talked about it last week. We'll probably take a few phone calls, maybe yours. The, the call-in phone number is 855 855- 357 1911. Hey, before I get going too far, we've got a couple new sponsors. I'll tell you about one before we before we dive in. If you're looking for options for your next special event or wedding, uh, Design to Dine, a West Michigan owned and operated company, offers a unique catering experience. They make your event a day or a night to remember. Call 616 259 0286. Again, that number is 616 259 0286 or visit them on design dash two dine to design dash two dash dine dot com. Let me make sure I read that right. Listen, what we're going to do is as we go forward, we're going to be talking about just general life issues, uh, current events, and the politics of our time. And uh, along the path, we'll probably be talking to some of the political leaders and uh, authors as we've always done, and we'll be hopefully talking to you. So if you're looking at the phone right now, right now, the phone number 855-357-1911. You can also find us on at the MikeHewittShow.com um, or you can find us on Facebook. Just just search on the Mike Hewitt Show and you'll be able to, in fact, if you don't want to call in and you've got a question, you can ask right there at, on Facebook. I'm hitting refresh, refresh and watching for your questions, watching for your phone calls. Uh, one of the things I did want to talk about today, along with a couple um, a, a couple um, uh, Middle East issues, but I'm really wanting to focus a little bit on family. It's one of my personal passions in terms of the direction of America. I'm concerned with um, the, the single parenthood, and I'm concerned with the, the the divorce the divorce rates in America, and I'm worried. I'm I'm really worried what the next generation is going to look like when we look at the stats. We've talked about it in the past. When we look at the stats for the numbers of people involved in in people that have been incarcerated, uh, people with drug issues, people that commit suicide, uh, rape issues, overwhelmingly in the 70 to 80 percent mark, those folks that are committing those types of acts are coming from single parent homes. And listen, I'm not trying to slay single parents because I've been one. I understand it. But when we're talking about how can we carve a better path forward, that is certainly one of the focuses that I wanna that I wanna bring some uh, some light light to bear on. So if you've got some if you've got a position on that topic or frankly any topic, by all means give us a ring. But that's the one I'm focusing on today. Um, when it, it, it it's one of those things where we're always asking ourselves which end of the stick do we wanna do we wanna worry about? I think part of the answer is. I saw, it was, and by the way, this is not my answer, but I saw a recent poll that said that, in fact, I think it was a national uh, um, national numbers from the um, Census Bureau that said that for the first time, and frankly, since they've con- started taking records, they've, uh, they've uh, um, uh, how shall I say, they, they, we've gotten to the point now where there are less people uh, married. Frankly, there are more people not getting married and choosing to have children. In fact, a lot of them not. Those things are, are kind of a problem, um, at least in my view. I know that there's some folks that uh, that disagree with me on that topic, but I'd be darned if I know how when the when the negative statistics are so overwhelming. Um, and I'm, I'm forever hearing the issue over the gay marriage thing, and that's not an issue I want to dive into today. But when I do the math... I think the the census identified three percent or so that said that they they identified themselves as gay or lesbian, and uh, folks, we're going to take our first call. Go ahead. Welcome to the Mike Hewitt Hello? Show. Hello, welcome to the Mike Hewitt Show. Hello, Mike uh, Shirko Abbas is here. Hey, Shirko Abbas, it's very nice to hear from you. Um, before, Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, very very good to hear from you. Just for listeners to know, we we I, I enjoyed having Shirko Abbas on uh, a, a few weeks ago. Um, make sure I get your title right. You are a doctor to start with, but you're also the president of the Kurdistan National Assembly of Syria. Uh, am I correct? The, you're correct. Okay. Thank you. Now, you're calling from, wh- where are you right now? Uh, I was just uh, in Brussels and Belgium and uh, 
Uh, now I'm moving to uh, actually in uh, Germany, so, so I'm calling you from Germany at the moment. So the last time we talked, I think you were in Michigan, but you spent a lot of time in Washington, D.C. Listen, I really, really appreciate you taking time out from the kind of schedule, and it must be late in the evening there now? Yes, it's a little bit uh, uh, after uh, uh, close to the early evening, yes. Okay. Hey, while I've got you, tell me what's, you know, of course, we're all watching the television of late, and and I we're hearing a lot about the Kurds from TV, which was which was a fascinating thing because that really hadn't been part of the media's focus for a long, long time. Now with this uh, ISIL or ISIS, whichever they're wanting to call themselves, now suddenly people are remembering that the Kurds are good fighters and maybe they can help. But how is that? How is that? What's the reality of that? Where are we at with that, Sherko? Uh, reality, since we talked, uh, more than 150,000 Kurdish refugees fled uh, from Kobani region, which is north of uh, Syria, Kurdistan. Uh, they fled to Turkey. Uh, obviously, most of them are children, women, uh, elder people trying to flee because, as you know, ISIS people, anybody Kurdish or Christian or Jewish they see or Kurdish Yazidi, they just cut their head off or kill them. Uh, that's uh, their ideology. Uh, so, uh, well, okay. Shirko, uh, this, uh, Shirko, let me ask you on that point. As I as I recall, the the, the overwhelming majority religion of Kurds is is uh, uh, Islam. Is um, why would they cut? Why would they cut off? Why why are they doing that to the Kurds when the, when they share a faith? Well, uh, when you look at the ISIS or, or ISIL. Uh, or um, Al-Qaeda or Muslim Brotherhood, most of them, they want to any, uh, Arabize any ethnic group, doesn't matter. They basically uh, use the religion of Islam just to Arabize and teach them the culture of hate. Uh, and uh, uh, this is exactly uh, their method. This is their method to kill anybody who do not agree with them. The Kurds are the most tolerant people in that region. Uh, we have Kurds are Muslim, Christian, Jews, Yazidis, and they have uh, tolerance for each other. They've been living with each other uh, in our marriages. So that is, a, uh, you know, the Kurdish woman, the first rabbi, uh, it was a Kurdish Jewish woman from Zaho. Uh, so the, this uh, tolerance for the men and women in, in different interfaith uh, marriages and, and, and living by so I, they identify first as Kurd. Just if you're an American, he says, I'm an American, and that's it. We stop there. We're Kurd, and that's it. We stop, uh, don't go, uh, and every, uh, the religion is between us and, and the God. Uh, so uh, that's the uh, ideology of the Kurds, and this is what the Kurdish uh, Islam is all about. Uh, whoever, the Arab Islam is, they try to destroy any ethnic or culture or religion out there and make them Arab and serve the Arab interest. And that is uh, the main difference. So uh, uh, because we're tolerant, we're not anti-Jews, we're not anti-Christian, we protect the Christian and other minorities in our area, they want to destroy us. They view us as a pro-West, and they want to destroy us. What, That's what? exactly uh, the main reason uh, that uh, I wanted to expand a few points today with you to, to express that point. I, and I appreciate that. One of the things... I found fascinating in our first in our first interview uh, together, Sherko was um, uh, my and I think I think I use the word Jeffersonian when I when I read yeah. when I read the information that that your organization is advancing. To me, it literally reads Jeffersonian. You're calling for a federal government with local autonomy and freedom of religion, uh, and I, I'm. <laughs> What what's really I, I understand I guess a little bit of where the where the radical uh, Israel is coming from, but I got to tell you what really confounds me is that when America has spent so long saying where are the moderate Muslims that should be standing up, and I'm thinking they're right in front of us. Why is this so difficult for our administration to discover, or do they discover it and don't like it? So, I, I guess uh, now that we're back engaged in a battle over there, is is Obama's administration? reaching out or accepting your offers of, of help and, uh, and and offering you help a little bit more than he was before? Uh, no, uh, unfortunately not. Uh, and I just uh, was, uh, before coming to your program, and I was on the program, uh, Voice of Israel, uh, with my friend uh, Dan Dyker, talking about the national security issues in the Middle East. 
uh, I express this point uh, that this administration have not even bombed the ISIS uh, uh, that they're besieging the Kurdish area. Only today started to target few limited uh, airstrikes. So the all ISIS group uh, and Al Qaeda and and guess what? Many of those Free Syrian Army that uh, Obama is trying to recruit more of them and train them with the U.S. tax dollars also helping ISIS to, uh, uh, to target the Kurds. So, so far, this administration, any uh, strikes they have done is not in the Kurdish area, but also the people, the very same people support, they attack the Kurdish area. And so the administration has not reached out to the Kurds. And, and this is a, uh, uh, it's a major concern uh, to us. Why? Uh, what is the reason? And, and is it because of uh, his coalition, Arab petrodollar have influence? We don't know, but the bottom line, uh, they have not identified the Kurds, and we knock on their door. We have discussions with the White House, with the State Department, and unfortunately, they don't. They want us to basically submit to the same group that they're today fighting us, uh, and, and, and not only that, this, all overwhelmingly, uh, let's put it this way, overwhelmingly, most Syrian opposition that Obama supports they are condemning U.S. airstrikes in, uh, against ISIS in Syria. So th the same people, they get the help now. So they're creating more ISIS. Hello, Kurds are there asking for your help, and the only people protecting the Christian and other minorities and Yazidis and Kurds are the Kurds. And we have no help and no weapon. And, and to give you an idea, last night it was raining so hard. Could you imagine babies and, uh, and kids and older people and women living out there in the element, the rain and cold, and uh, in its, uh, a few months, it snows around the corner. These people will die from hunger and also from the weather element. It, it's amazing to me. One of, one of the things I just, and it's more of a domestic political point that I need to make, I think, um, Shurko, and that's that you mentioned you were on the Dan, on, on, in an interview with Dan Diker. And, mm -hmm. and if it's the same Dan Diker, Dan Diker, and I'm certain it is, he's the director uh, general of the World Jewish Congress. Is this the same Dan Diker? It's the same Dan uh, Diker. Uh, now, now, wait a now, minute. Uh, wait a minute, Shirko. Yeah. Our media wants us to believe that all Muslims hate Jews. So what were you doing on an <laughs> what, <were> you <laughs> well, <laughs> what, you, what are you well, doing I, on an interview with him? <laughs> uh, I, I tell you, well, when Jews know that that's not the case. I mean, the Kurdish people, we helped the Jews uh, uh, from 1950s and 60s to survive uh, from the Arab world and Islamic world and to go to Israel, live there. And we have 350,000 Kurdish Jews moved also live there. Uh, and uh, so the uh, Jews know, and the Jews are friends of Kurds, and Kurds are friends of Jews. Uh, unfortunately, the, the, the NATO uh, group member uh, that Turkey is uh, part of in the U.S. administration are pressing the Jewish state not to help the Kurds. And, and in fact, they were, they were told not to engage the Kurds uh, of Syria and not to intervene, uh, intervene, and I'm sorry, intervene in, in Syria. So that's very interesting. Uh, but the, the Jews and the Kurds in that region been persecuted. They know uh, that they have to survive, and the, they're trying to people are trying to eliminate us from that area. I just don't. Uh, so truthfully, truthfully, Sharko, I don't, I don't really understand what a, what the United States government achieves by ignoring the obvious. And frankly, I don't. Of course, I, I'm I'm conservative, and the media tends to be liberal. Um, but but with that with that truth as a background, I don't understand why the media would be complicit in causing so many Americans to believe that Muslims hate Jews. Period. Or of late, now the American public is being convinced that the American government is working to arm the Kurds when that clearly is not the case. So I, I'm just a very, very confusing yeah, uh, double standard there. Well, yeah, w one point. I mean, General Petraeus and, and Lieutenant uh, Colonel uh, Anthony uh, Schaefer and also General Odino uh, and many other folks that I talked to, uh, they basically said what uh, U.S. administration doing uh, by very light, limited strikes, uh, today, it's not going to happen uh, in terms of getting rid of ISIS. In fact, uh, this is uh, uh, they need the boots on the ground, and the only boots on the ground are the Kurds right now, and they should be supported, the only people. Uh, but Obama is reaching to the Gulf state, uh, and the same people spread terrorism, Wahhabism, uh, and radicalism. 
and then now they, they claim that they want to get rid of the ISIS. Yes, they may get rid of some of the ISIS, but at the same time, they're developing alternative ISIS. Uh, right. So uh, this is a major concern for us, and uh, we need uh, humanitarian. We need the people who are listening to contact their local congressman, senator. Uh, I sent you a link a few minutes ago. A British MP, a uh, number of them coming in, is so strong in favor of supporting the Kurds because we share the same value of the Western and they're very strong supporter of the Kurds. And we really need the American Congress to do this. And, and frankly, the only way to do it is to have the people contact their congressmen and senator to see if they can help us. Uh, absolutely. Tell me this, but we're almost out of time for, the, for, this, uh, for this segment, uh, Sherko. But tell me, when you're in Germany, how, uh, how is the German government reacting to your requests and the needs that, that you're articulating? The German government has been great. The German government uh, is going to address the Kurdish issues in terms of humanitarian uh, via UN, and they will do a host of meeting next month, October 28th, in Germany. Uh, and because we expressed to them that so far, American given billions of dollars to the UN and given billions to the Syrian refugees, a zero dollar went to the Kurds. Nothing to the Kurds. They go to Turkish organization completely linked to Muslim Brotherhood. Akpari and people Erdogan uh, government and those people at the moment not given any help. In fact, they help ISIS, uh, and this is uh, the major concern. Uh, NATO allies helping ISIS, not allowing humanitarian to go to the Kurds. Uh, this is, is something of a major concern in this administration. It, it doesn't do anything about it. Sherko, listen, uh, Sherko Abbas, Doctor Abbas, I thank you very, very much for calling from all the way from Europe to, uh, to give us an update. Listen, somewhere over the next three or four weeks, I'd like to get you back on because this topic is not going to go away. It's going to get worse. And in the meantime, frankly, I'm going to recall, reach out to Michigan's Mike Rogers and see what information he can shed on it for the show. So, Dr. Yeah, Abbas, yeah, thank you very, very thank, much. Th th thank what? you very much. Please, your listener, if anybody can help with the Congress and Senate, we need your help. The only people who can help the, the Christian, the Jews, the Muslim moderate who view uh, Americans share the same value are the Kurds. We need the administration to help the Kurds. Yep. Do Dr. Abbas, we're going to post a, post a link to your organization's website on our website, and uh, we'll look forward to talking to you again. You have a great, great, uh, great time over there, and Godspeed, my friend. Thank you. God bless you. You're listening to News Talk 1090, WKBZ. Classes, Renegade River, next to the police station in downtown Spring Lake. The talk of Muskegon. News Talk 1090, WKBZ. I welcome back to the Mike Hewitt Show. I am Mike Hewitt, and listen, I wanted to just kind of retouch um, on my new sponsor. Looking for more options for your next special event or wedding? Design to Dine, a West Michigan-owned and operated company, offers a unique catering experience. They make your events a day or a night to remember. Call them at 616-259-0286 or visit at design-2-dine.com. I think I did it better that time, didn't I, Oscar? Phone number to call in is 855-357-1911. And folks, when we first off, it was great to have a Dr. Abbas to give us an update. I think he said he was in Brussels, wasn't he? Now, that's kind of significant. That's a little bit different than right down the street. Um, where we left off, as I was talking about before Dr. called, I'm talking about family. And, and again, I'm very concerned about the structure of family. Um, I, I joke a lot, I'm a father knows best 1950s thing, but I really believe in the nucleus family. That is not to be negative against sing, single parenting. I'm, I'm concerned, though, that with each generation, we're, we're becoming less of a family unit um, or a family unit that stats say isn't going to be doing society um, much good. And so that that's a concern to me. I know it's not politically correct to talk about it, but that doesn't take it away from the fact that it's a problem. And it's frustrating for a person that sees this like I do when the entire world seems to be arguing over gay marriage and the percentages of, of the folks that want to get married are so, so small compared to the, the national popula while traditional marriage itself is, is frankly in trouble. Uh, and with it, our, our uh, children are in trouble. So uh, to, to think that that's not concerning is, is just, it, it's, it's an overwhelming concern. If you, if you get bored, get on, get on the internet, Google 
uh, and type in, you start looking at the stats that are attached to this. I think we had a fellow named George Moss on uh, a few months back, and he went over them, and it was alarming to me, super eye-opening. Uh, and then I started talking to teachers and, and, and counselors and other folks that are directly involved in that, and uh, I'm telling you, it's it's a big, gigantic problem. Now, no question about it. And so if you've got thoughts on that topic, if you are a single parent and you think I'm crazy, I'm okay with it. Give me a call and tell me. If, uh, if on the other hand, you think I'm right, let's call me and tell me how we can try to reinforce, uh, reinforce marriage. That's the, it's only going to be one way or another. We're either going to start reinforcing marriage and in fact, in fact, right when Dr. Abbas called, I was starting down the path of saying we've got two choices. We either can start looking for ways to help marriage stay stay stronger, or we can, uh, or we can, or we can stand back and say, um, and say maybe we need to work with our young a little bit better on on what the, how how significant the the commitment to marriage is supposed to be. So listen, phone number. 855-357-1911. If you're listening, give us a call. Hey, you're uh, you're calling the Mike Hewitt Show. Who am I talking to? This is Gina. Hi, Gina. How are you? Welcome to the show. Good. How are you? Very nice. What uh, what kind of questions or comments do you have, Gina? Well, one, I'm glad that you do, you're you kind of changing the show up a little bit. It's kind of nice to have a call-in show because you have a lot of experience and it's nice to be able to ask a question. Yeah, Gina's, candidly, Gina, it's a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm having sure fun, but, you know, the first two or three or four times I'm going to lose the remaining hairs I got. So, <laughs> but I, <laughs> listen, I appreciate you saying that. No problem. And also, I guess I just have a question for you. It's always a debate in our household on video games. My son loves video games, and my husband also plays video games. Right. But I do not like video games. And I feel that it gets, it interferes with our family time. What do you think about allowing video games in the home? I I I, <laughs> I got to tell you candidly I'm I truly am a father knows best 1950s guy. When I was a kid at 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, fun to me was playing catch with my friends out 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 in someone's big yard. And so the concept of sitting inside all day long staring at something that's fake and not real, it to me is alarming. Now I don't want to be a hypocrite. I I I play video games, but to me it's a once in a rare occasion, and when I do it, I'm hopefully doing it with my daughter, with 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 a with my grandson or somebody. So it's an activity rather than disappearing into a into a virtual world. That to me is a little bit scary, but I I'm I can say that because my daughters are all grown up and moved on and they're married themselves. But but if I were parenting again, for me it would be it would be a reward for an activity and not a way of life. So you feel like there should be boundaries upon the video games, I, I, and that's just kind of a free for all. I think there's got to be. You know, and one of the one of the things that concerns me, and keep in mind, I've got a fedora hat, so I'm I'm very <laughs> old school. But one of the things that concerns me, Gina, is that the uh, it 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 feels like well, even when you you watch if you watch the person on the street interviews that David Letterman does and various people over the years on TV have done the, the, the person on the street interview and they don't have a clue what the Constitution is, they don't know who the Vice President is, they, they have no basic understanding but for me, I, and, and maybe I'm wrong by the way, but I think that what should be happening is that families ought to be having dinner together and that current events should be the topic of the dinner table um, along with a prayer by the way. Um, so in other words, I think that as a society, we've become very, very dependent on schools to do all the educating. And frankly, I, I'm not attacking schools. They're not capable of doing the parenting. We have to do the parenting. And parenting isn't possible for 10 minutes before we turn off the lights at night. I just, I don't, I don't believe that. It goes to dinners. It goes to activities. It goes to playing volleyball and kickball and fa baseball. And it, to, to me, it's these activities that bind a family. And I think that's what will give us a better future. I believe that. Well, good. I'm glad that I just won that argument. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and and your husband's probably going to call in a minute and scream at me, but, but, but I doubt that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, <laughs> me too. But I got to tell you, I just I, when I when I think about it, I can't fathom not. 
if 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 the newspaper were laid out and, and the husband or the, the, the father and the mother are talking about what just happened somewhere and they can frame how their personal moral and ethical and work and work ethic framework views whatever the topic is, that's a message for their children. And when their children aren't given the message for the parents, then other people are crafting how their how your children are looking at. I don't. I think that's a really slippery, dangerous slope. Uh, if we don't take a direct interest in how our children are seeing these events going around us, we sure as the heck can't complain when someone else fills that void we left. I really believe that. So um, that's what I think. Do All I right. Well, thank you. <laughs> okay, Gina. Thanks for calling in. I look forward to you doing that again. Folks, we've got another caller. If you would, put him through, Oscar. Yeah. Welcome to the Mike Hewitt Show. Hello. Hello? Yes. Hey, welcome to the Mike Hewitt Show. You're on. Hi, Mike. This is Colleen. Hello, Colleen. Um, just, I got lots of comments about this particular subject. Am One I, being that I, I became a single parent. Okay. Undue to no fault of my own, my ex-husband decided to tell me he was gay. So here I was with four children. And I think that part of the problem is with society, as I watch TV or anything, is that people want to be friends with their children. Right. That they forgot that you're the parent. Right. And I also think that um, you said something, I just heard you talking about the family thing of sitting down at the dinner table. We don't do that anymore. Right. And what I did with my four kids, and I suggest this to anybody, turn off the radio in the car. Not uh, talk radio, of course. But yeah. when you listen to music, I found that that was my time to talk to my children. Right. That we didn't listen to a radio, we talk. And then you find out how the day is going. But you're also a parent. So I had strict rules of being a stri uh, single parent. At 10 o'clock at night, I no longer, you should be in bed, okay? Kids right. should be in bed by then. I was me then, not mom. They could sit down and talk to me about whatever they wanted, but I solved every problem before 10 o'clock at night. Right. But I think that we've lost that family value of turning off the radios, turning off TV, and just talking to our children and not being their friend, being their parent. I, I, th I, think, you're absolute, I think you're absolutely right. And I'll tell you this, having been a single parent myself, it, 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 it is a matter of fact that it takes more love and more devotion to say no than it does yes. And and children need leadership. And it's kind of funny because it works this way in all walks of life. Even if we're talking about an employee and an employer relationship, communication is crucial. And expectations, that, that communicating expectations, all of these things are crucial. Teaching, teaching your children your value system is what I was mentioning with the, with the previous caller, is just huge that you do that rather than surrendering your own moral values for somebody else to to uh, to give to your kids. I think that's a real dangerous, slippery, slippery slope. I agree um, with and, you. And by the way, listen, I and I, I say it a lot, but I'm not taking a crusade against single parents having been one. Um, no. So so I'm not attacking men. I'm not attacking women. In fact, my my first political involvement, uh, the very first time I got pulled into the politics, it was as the chair of an organization that was called Voices for the Children of Divorce. And in that organization, it wasn't a father's rights organization. It wasn't a woman's rights organization. In fact, contrary, when we had meetings, we would always have somebody stand up in the, in the uh, little gatherings and start ripping apart their former spouse. He, were, he or she was a, and then a big long laundry list. And I was always aghast at that. I would think, wait a minute. Uh, you live with this person, you have kids with this person, and what a terrible statement it makes for the person that's saying the nasty things, because th they do two things. First off, they 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 don't they're not appraising their own their own uh, choices very well in life, but they're also telling their children that half of you is like saying to your kid, half of you is a terrible rotten, and then all the rest of the words that go with it. And I, you know, I'm not one of those liberal self-esteem builders where nothing matters but self-esteem. But telling a child that he or she is worthless because half of them, that, that's the message when we're saying half of you is worthless. And I wish parents would slow down a little bit and think about what they're saying to their child when it comes to, especially in those deals where there's a broken family. And to your point where someone's announced they're gay, you can't, how, how are you going to, how are you going to control that? Clearly you don't. But I told my kids when I when he came out, it didn't change who he was. Right. We're actually still friends. 
And it's because I took the attitude of, it doesn't change who he is. Like you say, I made the choice to marry him. I wouldn't change it because I have those four kids. Right. And I wouldn't change my four kids for anything in the world. Let, let me ask you something, just, just out of idle curiosity. Do, does your ex-husband, who's gay, view himself as a Democrat or a Republican? He views himself as a Republican. Okay. And that, he that, went through a Democratic phrase for about a year. Okay. Um, and then he realized that was totally insane. Okay. So he went back to being a Republican. Um, at the time we were married, he was very involved in the Republican Party and things. Okay. Um, he did get married because that was something that was important to him. Okay. But that took him, he's been with his partner for 17 years. Okay. So you've been away from him for a long time. A long time. How old are your kids now? Um, they range from 21 to 32. Uh, and then this is more more of a just a side note curiosity, but how do they deal with the fact that their father has come out and, and got married? Um, it was hard. They, I actually, they made me go to the wedding with them because they didn't want to do it alone. There's, there's a picture awkward moment. No, it gets worse because okay. I did walk him down the aisle and give him away. <laughs> <laughs> and I also catered. I cooked the food for his part for his reception for him. Yeah, and I got to Let me stop you for a second. I know that there are a lot of set the gay issue aside for a minute. There are pro probably a lot of ex spouses that said, "Hey, I would have given my spouse away too." Yeah, <laughs> so, I thought it was perfect, didn't you? There, <laughs> <laughs> and there people you go. didn't think I was right, but I'll tell you what. It, that's what my kids wanted. Yeah, it, my kids didn't want to go alone, so it didn't right. matter how I felt. It didn't matter how hard it was for me to sit there and watch it. Right. I did it because my kids asked me to go. Right. Um, and that, I think, is the biggest problem we have in this world is that people don't realize the kids didn't ask to be born. Right. We brought them into this world. Uh, and I, that means it's our responsibility, no matter what we think about our partner or his decisions, we chose to have the child. i, I got to tell you, on that point, I, I've said something real similar to that a, lo a number of times, I, and I equate it to racism. The idea of not liking somebody because how they are born is just the most idiotic, moronic thing I can think of. Um, but, uh, and I'm, what I'm talking about, the differences in race, a black person and a white person. I don't like you because you're white or I don't like you because you're black. What the heck do you mean? That's just blatant That's, stupidity yeah, in my I mind. Agree. I mean, I was born with brown hair and it turned gray and fell out, by the way. Do you not like <laughs> me because I, I just, to me, uh, it's just... I don't like your genetic makeup, so get away from me. I, I think that's just so crazy thinking. Now, I don't know that you and I would agree on the topic of whether gay is a choice or not, because frankly, I think it's a choice. Some people say it's not, and I'm, I'm on the people make a choice side. And by the way, I don't care what their choice is, but I think it's a choice side that is... And the only reason I'm going to disagree with you is because I don't believe he would have chose to give the kids an eye up. Oh, I'm, I can understand that. You that, know what I mean? Yep, it I was heart-wrenching for him to have to give us up. Okay. He still has a hard time with it. but I bet. And, you know, and I told him, and, and this is the other thing for people, when you go through the divorces, why are you getting a divorce? And you need to separate facts because sometimes he would say something about being gay, and I said, that's not a gay issue. Right. It's a divorce issue. Don't cop everything on the gay issue because right. I'm not going to tolerate it. Some things are just divorce. Listen, I've, I'm, I'm going to have to cuss out, cut us Sorry. off because I, that's okay. Listen, I've really enjoyed this, and I hope you call back because we've got some topics to finish. So, we're, folks, we're going to go to a break, and thank you very much for calling in. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. This is News Talk 1090 WKBZ. Uh, welcome back to the Mike Hewitt Show. This is Mike Hewitt, and the call-in number is 855-357-1911. Oscar, we've got someone on the line. Welcome to the Mike Hewitt Show. Are you with me now? Welcome to the Mike Hewitt Show. Hi, how are you? Thanks for taking my call. Good, welcome. <laughs> um, I've been waiting and waiting. I listened to your show, and I've been waiting and waiting for this uh open mic, and I really am excited about it. So I've been thinking all night long about the different issues that are really affecting my personal world, and I've got a big old page, so I narrowed it down to two. 
Wow, but listen, everybody, I got to do a full disclosure here because every, every, probably every other week or two weeks or so, I talk about my sister Brenda from Nevada, and we have on the line with us now my sister Brenda from Nevada. So, <laughs> yes, I am. Listen, all, all jokes with aside, with a lot of opinions. There you go. Oh boy, she does. Listen, before we get to your opinions, I got to tell you the reason that we are doing this call and show was in large part to you. And I use it as an example. Every time I get some high, uh, higher, somebody talking about twenty-two trillion this or ten trillion that, I say, okay, my my sister would tell us, tell us though. Let's drill this down. What's it mean to her? And I think you're absolutely right with that. So it it does because when you're talking seventeen trillion, eighteen trillion dollars in debt, that's like monopoly money. It doesn't mean anything to me. Right. And okay. Okay, so we're eighteen trillion dollars in debt. Okay, it's, it's like so this, it's, it's nice it, to hear. Okay, that eighteen trillion means you. Right. I mean, it's going to happen to your children, your grandchildren. Oh, you know, and then it hits home. Okay, how can we fix it? And the, then the questions start coming. It sure. is. It's the same thing with, like, for instance, the Middle East politics. Uh, mm-hmm. My gunsmith uh, uh, Brian, I think you met him, um, who served in, in Iraq and specifically was very injured in Fallujah. When when he's in the gun shop and the news is on, if he sees Obama, he's physically got to leave the room. But he says, "Listen," he said. He said, "For a lot of folks, I understand they're watching it. It's just a news story, and it's terrible. And 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 you know, both the the left and the right argue." He said, "But I was there. I watched friends die, and I'm injured. So when we're surrendering what I gave blood for." He literally he cannot stay in the room. So I say that I say that only to point out that some of these things. They, they really directly impact people. They do, and, and I'm a firm believer, and I've said it for many, many years, it's only ugly to people when it happens to them exactly or theirs. Right. Other than that, they could care less. That's exactly You know, right. most people are more excited about um, George Clooney's wedding this week than they are about the poor gal who was beheaded in Oklahoma, uh, and probably including Obama. Do Obama you... was sure quick to respond to Zimmerman case. He was quick to respond to the Ferguson case. But this one, he's not said anything that I've heard, and no. I really listen. Well, listen, if the, so if the, if the, I, I question all those things. If, yeah. the, if the beheading in Oklahoma would have been white on black instead of black on white, if it would have used a firearm instead of a knife, it didn't fit the media's... Um, exactly. It didn't fit their political agenda, so it was an ugly story for a day and a half. But if it was any of the other things, they'd still be talking about it. Now, every time there's a crime in Ferguson, by the way, it's back in the headlines. Absolutely. And going, oh, stop. Jeez, let's Turning move on. Racial. So, uh, and, uh, you know, and as far as the guns, you know, not only are you a gun um, store owner, but also my dad was very involved, and you, of course, know that, in guns. So I've grown up with guns in our household. Yeah. And... When I see all this Second Amendment thing and all this fighting in all the schools, and you know, and yes, it is horrible, horrible that it happens to children in schools, although it's a very, very small amount, it's not everyone's going to school shooting kids. Um, but aside from that, they are pushing no guns, no guns, people shouldn't have guns. Well, when the little guy jumped over the fence at the White House a week or two ago, did you see the guns that was protecting Obama's family? They don't Did talk you see about the that. guns that they were showing in, 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 to protect the White House people? Well, or, or the but fact we're that, not allowed to protect our people. Right. I have issues with that. Or the fact that it was a gun owned by a legal citizen that stopped that, uh, that crazed nut down there in Oklahoma. Yes. But when you look at the history of, of those types of topics, for example, the worst school disaster in American history that was caused by domestic terrorists is what I call these people. Um, and it, the worst one ever had nothing to do with guns, and it's why you've never heard of it. So mm-hmm. there was a little school called Bath up in Bath, Michigan, and sure. 58 people died, and they and they were blown up with, with dynamite. And then the guy committed suicide and killed his wife before he did all. You, if, if the guy would have done that with a firearm, you'd, they'd talk about it still. And every time somebody still, else, yes. every time yes. some other nut did it, they'd refer to the greatest disaster ever. But this sure. one you've never heard of because it, well, it didn't fit their... It didn't fit their agenda. So, hey, Brenda, what were the two things on your list? My two things are, um, I only have one grandchild. He is almost 17 years old. And potential war coming at us. I, I, I'm questioning what this administration is doing because they're letting them behead Americans, Benghazi, um, and they don't seem to be doing much unless I'm, but I'm the little man who doesn't pay, you know, I pay attention, but maybe I don't understand it fully, which you know I do not. 
but when I look at it, we don't seem to be protecting our country. And now it's going into Oklahoma. Now it's coming into the United States. And yes, it's one maybe isolated case, but is it only one isolated case? It, yeah, that's it's, a, it's, that's it's a serious not. question that I have, and I don't want my son, my grandson, to go off to war for some religious war that I, I, is I, none of our business in the first place, I, I, I got, feel. I got to tell you, I don't, I, you know, of course, there's a thousand different people that have different views on whether it's our Absolutely. business or not. But, but I'll tell you this, two things. First off, the liberals want the draft. Conservatives don't. At this point, at least in our in in the immediate future, it's not likely to be a draft anytime soon. So, in terms in terms of of your grandson, I don't see him being drafted. The, but the downside to that is is uh, can you hear that? I don't know what that noise is. It's probably an airplane. I'm in the backyard. Wow! It is an airplane. <laughs> Is it um, an airplane? I'm so sorry. You want me to go in the house? Nope, you're fine. I just couldn't figure out what the noise was. It's an airplane. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, everyone. Is that, McL- is that, is I, that I'm McLaren? I'm concerned because... That's McLaren International Airport, right? Yes, it is. Okay. The other, <laughs> but before you go ahead, the other thing that I was going to say is, though, if, even though there's not a draft, if we don't close our southern border, and frankly, folks, our northern Thank border you. is just Thank as you. porous. In fact, there's probably more terrorists coming across from Canada because of their open door policy up there is just easy. You can come down here and say, I'm just going to a casino and in you come. But but I, I got to tell you, it, that's going to cause it at some point where we're going to see uh, we're going to see um, literally ground battles, boots on the ground in domestic America. If exactly. we don't if that's we don't I'm change our about. Pa- and, yeah. and James is um, 17 years old at Christmas. And that's a big concern to me, and it may take a year or a year and a half. And I'm just not sure what this administration is doing to to <laughs> stop it. They're not. They're we, not sure what they're doing either. Yeah, that's the problem. Their strategy, their plan is is nothing, and or at least they're not telling us in his transparent administration. I'm concerned about that because it does affect my world. Right. Um, so that's an issue. I think about it daily. I watch the news daily. I'm very concerned, and like you say. Uh, I don't believe it's an isolated case. I believe there is a lot of those people already here there, to do harm right. to some, this country and s- to our children. Some of them, some of them are just sympathizers and, and copycats. Mm-hmm, some mm-hmm. of them have literally been sent here. And to sure. the debate over whether they are or not, that's not a debate. It's it's a fact that it sure. is absolutely a fact that that they're here. So now, yeah. whether they do and, anything or not, I I don't think it's a question of of if. I think it's when. It's when, and and if it doesn't affect my grandson, it will affect my nieces and nephews, your right. children, your grandchildren, and, and I don't think we're putting any effort. Or, you know, are we doing like Benghazi, basically nothing, and and disdaining the truth to get to make their to make them look okay? I, I, I'm concerned about what's happening, and with another almost two years presidency of him. It scares me. I, I a gotta, lot. T- I gotta tell you, I'm, I'll be the last person in the world to defend the Obama. But when I look at our government in total, I, I, I sometimes, first off, I wonder if it isn't so big that it takes it a year just to turn around in a circle and to try to, to try to get it to come forward with a concise message involves hundreds and thousands, uh, hundreds or thousands of people. So that's why we get conflicting messages. Like at the top of the show today, we had Dr. Abbas on, and what he was saying uh, as the president of the Kurdish, uh, the Kurdish National Assembly uh, from the Middle East, what he was saying was completely and absolutely contradictory to what, and here's come, here comes the, the, the trick, what either the media is saying or or the or the, the the White House administration, I never know whether they're both lying or they're disconnected or multiple yeah, sets exactly. of lies or just multiple. By the way, sometimes it's just misinformation because they're incompetent. It reminds but me of when I ran for office and they had they had me over the course of an of of a, of a campaign. The local media had had me living in seven different townships, and that wasn't bias against me. It was just raw incompetence. And so, I mean, I recognize that exists on a, on a, especially on a federal level, but certainly sure. within the, with the, the concept of journalism is, is a, that's like an archaic word. That, that went out with my fedora hat. Oh, it absolutely did. I absolutely agree with that. Um, my second concern is uh, Obamacare. I was waiting and waiting for the dust to settle, for it to calm down, for everyone to stop with their opinions. And now it's just cold, hard financial 
issues from a big portion of America. Right. And I don't think people are saying it. You know, Medicaid people are still fine. Medicare people, for the most part, I think are fine. Although our mom pays a whole lot more for doctors, for prescriptions, um, for blood work, whatever, for whatever her older age issues are. Uh, the rich people, you know, the George Clooney who was just on TV this week, I'm sure he's fine. It's the middle class working America. For me to go, my husband's worked all of his life, I've worked all of my life. For us to go to the doctor, how sick are we? Right. And when they're saying, well, it's standard, standardized it across the board, it did if your pockets are deep enough. It is. It is. They're exactly right. It is standard. Yeah, but listen, you know, though, back, back when this was a debate, before it became the law of the land and we were told just to shut up and deal with it, back when it was still a debate and people like Sarah Palin said, we're going to have death, we're going to have increased, she, she listed the things very, yeah. very articulately, by the way. She listed these are the things we're going to get out of this. The entire Democrat Party went crazy, and a third of the Republican Party went crazy that she would say those stupid things. But listen now, history is what it is. She was exactly yeah. 100% Correct. Exactly. Um, exactly. And so now we we've got what we've gotten, and we're as long as the Democrats control the Senate, uh, Obamacare is going to be the law of the land, and and that's just the way it is. So what I'm seeing a lot lately, if people that are that share my ideology, a lot of them are very frustrated because some of the Republicans crossed over, and so their answer is, well, we're not gonna we're not going to help, we're not going to get involved, and the problem with that is that we know for a fact the Democrats aren't going to do anything. We right, have got to right. get control of the of the U.S. Senate. Uh, it's things that that that, for instance, we've got three Supreme Court justices in their late seventies and one in her early eighties. And to think that that Marxist president of ours—I can't figure out another way of saying it—has got two more years to appoint somebody or multiple people to that Supreme Court when we know the U.S. Senate is the one that confirms confirms. Sure. Uh, I mean, this is extremely important. Liberty and treasury are in the balance. Sure. And, and, and even to break it down even further than that, what that means to me with what you all just said is that um, my deductible is higher. I used to get insurance for free, paid through Jim's employer. Right. Now I pay $500 a month. Got pretty pricey once it was free, huh? Yes, it did. <laughs> for, for the middle class people, yeah. it did. For the working class people. And to go to the doctor, it's expensive. Yeah. Our prescriptions are through the roof. I remember we, used once, to have, we used to have $4 prescriptions until Obama came into office. Yeah, I remember, now we do not. I know, so it, is it standard across the board for everyone like it was supposed to be? Yeah, Absolutely not. It, it is kind of, Brenda, because everyone's getting hosed equally across the board. I um, don't believe that. Well, unless, I, 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 I have a friend who's on Medicaid. Yeah. Um, she goes to the doctor at a drop of a hat. She okay. She has, she even has um, braces for her grandchildren right. because she's supporting them. Um, she, um, everything is just handed. One little one goes to a, a therapist right. every week. I couldn't afford to go to a therapist every week. I couldn't afford braces. I don't need them, obviously, but I couldn't afford these things. Right. I can't. I have to very, very watch my pennies because of my deductible is so high, because my $500 a month, that's a big payment yeah, for the average, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're retired people. That's yeah. a big, huge payment, no but not old it. enough for Medicare. America, America's, America's concept of health is going to change a lot now that it's free. Brenda, I got to I got to stop okay. us because Oscar's is giving me the wind up. And, uh, <laughs> okay. Folks, what I need everyone to do is write the number down. Call next week. It's 855-357-1911 because I've had a lot of fun today. We're going to keep doing this, folks. Awesome. Thank Brent, you so much. Brent, thanks for calling in. We'll talk to Thank you soon. Thank you. Bye, Oscar. Bye-bye.